Hey guys and welcome back to another Unreal Engine 4 tutorial. In today's video we're going to be going over showing you how to create a bear trap in your game in which when a player walks over it, it will activate and then they can press E or spam E a load of times to then break free from it. So let me hit play and show you what we're going to make. So you can see I'm in here, the bear trap's over here. If I walk into it, it's going to close like that and I now can't move. But if I spam E a load of times, it's going to open and break free. Now there's no sound effects, there's no visual cue telling you what to do this or anything like that. However, I will show you how to do that kind of and I do have other videos showing it in more detail and I'll just point to where you put those in today's video. So I'll show you where you need to put them and have other videos going over them because I don't want to make this too long. I'm just giving you the basic fundamentals of this and then you can improve upon it and advance upon it in the future if you so wish to and also you can do that straight away as I do have the videos readily available now. So this is what I'm going to make today. So without further ado, let me delete the code and I'll show you how I've done it. So the first thing we want to do is we obviously want to import our bear trap model. So I've got one off of CG Trader and it is free. However, you do need to give attribution to the creator, which obviously I have done in the description down below. And you will see how to do that when you go to its page, which is also linked in the description down below as well. So this is what it looks like. I've given it a basic brown shade and I've also joined some different parts together. So we have this main section and we have the two different things here like so. This is what you're gonna to want to do as well if you want to animate it inside of Unreal. You want to have the two separate claws as separate meshes from each other like so. So that's what I've done and then when I imported it, I just unticked import animations and a skeletal mesh as well. So let me know if you want a bit more detail on that in the comments down below. And once we've done that, we can then obviously create this as a blueprint. So obviously I've got it imported here. I'm gonna right click, get a blueprint class, get an actor, and I'm going to name this one Bear Trap BP, like so, opening it up straight away. And I'm going to keep it minimized like this just for the second. Select my three different Bear Trap static meshes I have here. Then double click this to open it up fully again. Then I'm going to add a component and add static mesh multiple assets. And now you can see we have all the static meshes in here at once. What I'm going to do is unparent them from each other, so just select them like that. Then select them all again and I'm going to scale these down as these are very big. So I'm going to scale them down to 0.3 as that's what I found to be good when I was testing out earlier. Obviously if you're using a different mesh it will be different for you but if you're using this one that's what I found to be good. I'm going to compile and save and as you can see I've also given them good names so left claw, right claw, main support, all that good stuff there. Next what I want to do is want to add another component this one being a box collision and this is essentially where the player has to be to trigger this bear trap to go off. So I want this to just be in the middle of the bear trap like so, not too big, but not too small. So I think that's gonna be good. So if the player stands there, because obviously that circle there is actually what triggers it in real life as well. So if the player stands there, it's gonna close. Set this again to be absolutely whatever you like. Now also in real life, I believe only this one comes up or at least on this specific model, but I'm gonna have them both join up as well, just to make it look a little bit better. So I'm going to compile, save that, and then I'm going to go straight over to the event graph here, and delete these three nodes. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to right click and add a custom event, and I'm going to name this one catch player. Now this isn't too necessary, you can do it all in one code, which is what I did originally. However, it did just look a little bit messy, so I'm just doing this to keep it nice and organized and easier to look at. Then I'm going to add an input on this custom event, naming this character. I'm going to set the boolean to be a character object reference there, compiling and saving that. Then out of this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the character movement. If we scroll down, we get character movement there. And out of this, I'm going to disable the movement. And I'm doing that because obviously when they're in the bear trap, we don't want the player to be able to move because they've been caught. Then what I also want to do is I want to just simply move the player's location to be more centralized within the bear trap again just to make it look a little bit better so out of character again I'm going to set actor location and what I'm going to use as a reference for the central point of the bear trap is the box collision because as you can see the center of the box collision is also the center of the bear trap so I'm going to get the box there out of this I'm going to get world location and now I can just connect that straight in there however that's also going to change the player's z location so they now might be halfway through the floor which obviously we don't want. So I'm gonna right click the return value, split the structure pin, right click the new location and also split the structure pin and then input the X and Y in there. 
Now to get the Z location, we can just keep that as the player's current location. So we can come out of character and then get world location, or get actor location, sorry my bad. Get actor location, right click, split structure pin, connecting the Z into there like so. And that is how we're going to catch the player. We're just going to disable their movement and then move them to be more centralized within the bear trap as well. So we can compile and save that. And again, I just want this to be a little bit cleaner and a little bit less messy, which is why I've got it up here. So we can scroll back down just underneath this. Then we can right click on our box collision and add event and add on component begin overlap, because this is obviously how we're going to trigger the bear trap. So out of other actor, what I'm going to do is cast to my character, which for me is the third person character like so, because obviously this is how we want to decide which actor we want to actually trigger this. So I want my character to trigger it. If you're doing multiplayer, so you have different characters, you'll probably want to use a blueprint interface instead. But in this example, I'm just doing it for the third person character. And so then out of this, so just after it, sorry, we're going to call function catch player, that custom event we just made up here. And then character is going to be as third person character, like so. So this character is the reference for the catch player here. So we can then use all this up there like so. And then after this, we also want to enable the input of this blueprint so the player can then spam E or whatever you want to escape the bear trap. So I'm going to right click and get player controller, drag out of this and enable input like so with the player controller going to player controller, not target. Then after that, what I also want to do is disable the collision of the box collision. So I'm going to get the box and set collision enabled. Now the reason I'm doing that is because otherwise as soon as the player breaks free, they're just going to immediately get caught again as they're inside the box collision. So if we just disable its collision, then that won't happen. So I'm going to set that to no collision. And then out of this, once again, I'm going to get an add timeline like so. And the timeline is how we're going to be creating the animation for it closing. So if you have just an animation anyway, what you can do is just get a play animation which will also work perfectly for you. And I'm just going to name this open slash close bear trap like so. And I'm going to double click that to open it up, leaving the input going into play. I'm going to set the length of this to be 0.2 as I think that's going to be a good value for me, maybe 0.3. But obviously set this to whatever you like. This is just essentially how quick the bear trap is going to close. And in real life, they're pretty quick. And then I'm going to add a new float track. I'm just going to name this one track. And I'm going to right click inside of it, add key to curve float with a time of zero, the value also of zero. Right click, add another key, with a time of 0.3 or whatever you set your length to be, and a value of one. So it's going to go from zero to one over the length of this timeline, and we're going to use that value to then rotate the bear trap accordingly. So we can close that timeline, and now you can see we have that track there. What we're going to do with the track is we're going to right click and get a lerp, just a normal lerp under float with the alpha being that track there, because that's going from zero to one. So the alpha will go from zero to one between A and B, with A and B being our open and close angles for the bear trap. So I hope that makes sense. So A is open, B is close, alpha is going from A to B. And what we want to use this return value for is to set the rotation of the two different hooks and claws for our bear trap. So I'm gonna do the right claw first, or the right claw for me anyway, which is this one here. So you see, I've named it bear trap right claw. So I'm gonna drag and drop a reference to that in here. Out of this, I'm going to set relative rotation, make sure it's relative, and connecting that into the update of the timeline like so. Then we're gonna right click new rotation and split the structure pin as we only want to rotate it on the Y axis, or at least it's Y for me. Check to see what it is for you, but as you can see, I'm rotating it on the Y. And also this is the open angle and this is zero and I want it to close around there, which is 60. So you can see there, it is 60 on the Y when it's closed. Bearing that in mind, we're gonna go back to the event graph, leave A as zero, because that's open, and put B as 60, as that is now closed. So that is gonna go from zero to 60 on the Y, rotating it perfectly. And then we're gonna do the same for the left. So we're gonna drag and drop left claw there, set relative rotation, connecting that into there, right click, split structure pin, and we're gonna get another lerp. So we don't wanna use the same one because these have different values. So I'm just gonna duplicate it, connecting it into there like so, 
alpha again going to the same track because we still want to use 0 to 1 but a and b are going to be different. a will stay as 0 but b is going to be minus 60 for me, it's just the complete opposite and we can again double check that, that is 0 on the y and that's minus 60 on the y. So again set these angles to be what you want them to be or what they are for you because they might be different but yeah just get a and b to be your open and close angles working perfectly like so. And that is how we're going to open the bear trap. To close it, we can simply just reverse this. So let's set that up now. So underneath this, I'm going to right click and add a custom event, naming this open, because I think I have set that the other way around, sorry. So this is actually going to close it, and now we want to reopen it. So to reopen it, we obviously want to re-enable the character's movement. So we can come out of the as third person character again, getting the character movement which again will be down at the very bottom and then out of that we can then set movement mode it's not enable movement it's set movement mode with a new movement mode being walking after this I'm going to hold down S and left click to get a sequence with then 0 going to reverse of the timeline and then 1 is going to go into a delay so we can hold down D left click to get a delay I'm going to set the duration as 3 seconds I'll tell you what that's for in a second and after this we're going to get the box collision and just set collision enabled once again. So as I mentioned earlier, also sorry, this new type is going to be collision enabled query in physics. But as I mentioned earlier, we're disabling the box collisions collision up here so that when the player does break free, it doesn't just immediately re-enable. So that's what we're doing here. So as soon as the player breaks free, three seconds later, it's going to re-enable the collision, i.e. the bear trap will be active again. So the player has three seconds once they break free to get out of it, Otherwise it's then active again, and if they're still in it while it's active, then it's obviously going to close on them again. So that is how we're going to set up opening and closing the bear trap when the player is inside of it. However, we obviously need a way for the player to actually open it, to fire off this event and all that good stuff. So for me, what I'm going to do is make them spam E. You can have them just press E, spam E, hold E, anything you like, and I do have different videos on all three of those techniques and methods. But again, today I'm going to be doing spam E, and you can obviously watch that video as well to advance upon this to make it look a little bit nicer. But I'm going to go over the basis of it. So what I'm going to do is find some empty space, right click and just get an E keyboard event or whichever button you want to use. And out of this, we want to increase an integer. So I'm going to hit the plus variable, naming this presses, and I'm going to change this to be an integer, compiling that. Then I'm going to get this, so drag and drop get presses, and out of this, I'm going to get an increment int like so, which is just going to simply add one to it, because every time we press E, we want to add one to the amount of times we've pressed E. Then out of that, I'm going to get an equal equal integer. With the bottom value, I'm going to right click, promote to variable, naming this presses needed. So how many times the player needs to press E versus how many times they have pressed E. And we want to check to see if these are equal. So we're going to hold down B, left click to get a branch, the condition going in there, the execution going to there like so. And if it's true, that means the player can break free. If it's false, they need to keep retrying. So out of true, what I'm going to do is call function open, which is a custom event we just made here to reopen the bear trap like so. But out of released of E, we want to then reset presses back to zero. Because I want to do this so if they're being quick enough, they have to really press E quickly, not just press it, wait two seconds, press it again, or anything along those lines. So out of released, I'm going to get a re-triggerable delay. I'm going to set the duration to be 0.5. You can set this to however long you want, but I think 0.5 is going to be good, so they really have to press it quite quickly, but you can increase or decrease this accordingly to you. And out of the completed, we're going to set presses to 0. And it's re-triggerable because essentially every time an execution goes into this delay, it's going to restart. So essentially every time the player presses E, it will restart. So we can compile and save and hit play to test this out, obviously once we've dragged one in here. So let me also drag two in here like this. Also if we have more than one, sorry, what we should do is select the E keyboard event there and untick consume input, compiling and saving that. And that just means that multiple instances of this same blueprint can use this keyboard event. So let's hit play to test this out. So I'm going to walk over here. If I go on it, we can see we can't move. We've trapped and it closed with that animation like so. 
and if I just spam E, nothing's going to actually happen because we forgot to set that value. Uh, so let me do that now. Press is needed, we can select that and set its default value to how many times we want to press the button. So I'm going to set it to 10. You can set this to whatever you like, but I think 10 is going to be a good value, so the player has to press E 10 times in order to break free. So we can compile, save, hit play, test this out one more time, walk into it, it closes with the animation, we can't move, we press E 10 times, it's then going to reopen with the animation perfectly and we can break free moving about perfectly like so again. And now let's test it on the other one as well, which should work the exact same way, closed, we can't move and we can open it again. So that works perfectly. So I think that'll be it for this video, it's we've done everything we want to do. We've set it up so we have a bear trap if when we walk into it, it's going to close with an animation and disable the player's movement so we can no longer move. And if we press E a certain amount of times, it's going to reopen with an animation and allow us to move perfectly like so again. And again, you can obviously improve upon this however you like, for example this spam E here, or adding sound effects or anything along those lines. But thank you so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed and I hope you found it helpful. And if you did, make sure to like and subscribe down below. So thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.